This over here is the Apple M3 Max. And have you ever wondered how good is the 40 core GPU inside there? How does it compare to AMD, Nvidia and Intel? And which desktop GPU is comparable with this laptop GPU? get ready to be shocked. This video is not sponsored by anybody, but if you do want to pick up any of the things we're talking about in this video, I'm going to leave the link in the description below, as well as the Tech Notice merch. If you want to pick up some hats, hoodies, t-shirts, you don't have to, but I'm going to leave the link in the description below if you do want to check them out. Back to the video. Now this 40 core GPU inside here is technically not Apple's best GPU, the M2 Ultra would in some of the cases be better but the m3 max in the 40 core gpu is actually very close to that one just to let you know so which gpus are we comparing on the desktop side then what we have here is the amd radian 7900 xt from asus so this is the asus tuf model obviously there's lots of different designs whichever one you want to go for and this is absolutely massive massive big chungus then from NVIDIA, we have the RTX 4070, and this is the Zotac Trinity model here. And then from Intel, we have the Intel A770 Arc, and this is the Sparkle version. There's also Acer Predator versions, but I think the Sparkle one or the uh, limited edition Founders Edition or whatever Intel calls them, uh, they are one of the nicest looking ones. I really like the Sparkle look of these. So we're going to be looking at some of the GPU tasks, what these GPUs can be compared to. Firstly, we're going to talk about VRAM. Now, this A770 has 16 gigabytes of RAM. The 4070 has 12 gigabytes of VRAM and the 7900 XT has 20 gigabytes of VRAM. This M3 Max GPU has 48 gigabytes of unified memory. Now, this is for the whole system to be utilized, right? CPU and other tasks as well. So it's shared between the whole system because it's an SOC. But you can upgrade this up to 128 gigabytes, which means that potentially your GPU can have 128 gigabytes of RAM, VRAM, which is absolutely insane. Now. In order to buy this configuration, the 48 gigabyte version, you're gonna to have to cash out $4,000. But if you wanna upgrade the RAM to 128 gigabytes, you're gonna to have to cash out extra thousand. That will be five a grand then. But depending what you do, you might wanna upgrade the RAM because that is not usually upgradable. Neither is the VRAM on these GPUs, but you can upgrade the GPU whenever you want later on. So let's take a look at some of these benchmarks. Firstly, I wanna test Redshift rendering performance, which we can actually test in the new Cinebench R24 or Cinebench 24 there. There's a GPU test as well, which actually tests the Redshift rendering engine. The M3 Max gets 13,104 points. The Intel GPUs are not supported on Redshift, so that's a big L for Intel. The 7900 XT, this massive GPU, gets slightly lower score than this M3 Max. Now that is absolutely insane performance for this Apple GPU there. The 4070, as always, Nvidia GPUs are extremely good for 3D performance get 17,432 points, which is 33% faster. But to get this type of GPU performance inside the laptop is rather impressive, if you ask me. Geekbench 6, now all the GPUs are supported. And here you can see that the A770 is about 18% faster in the OpenCL score, but about 25% slower on the Vulkan score. Bear in mind, the Vulkan score can't really be compared to metal, but there's Vulcan and Metal, you know, one is Apple's own and then Vulcan is slightly different. The 7900 XT is about 60.5% faster in the open CL scores and quite a bit faster on the Vulcan scores, but again, M3 Max doesn't support Vulcan, it's Metal, so they're not exactly comparable. And 47 is a 91% faster, almost double the performance in open CL and about 8 percent faster in the Vulcan scores. Again, Vulcan Metal can't be compared. But this is very synthetic benchmark, which doesn't actually give you real world performance. But looking at the real world applications like Redshift, that's where we really see the performance difference. Moving on to Blender GPU benchmark. And this is what all of these GPUs now can do. And bear in mind the M3 Max GPU now can also support hardware acceleration ray tracing which really puts it on par with a lot of these GPUs on the desk. So let's take a look. Firstly, the A770 is, oh my goodness, 
36 to 41 percent slower in the blender rendering than this laptop gpu that's ridiculous the 7900 xt what we have here massive gpu from amd is 2 to 17 percent slower in one step junk shop and classroom scenes and this nvidia rtx 4070 as always performs absolutely amazing in 3d is pretty much double the performance in the monster scene about 67 percent faster in junk shop scene and about 68 percent faster in classroom scene so the amd is definitely the winner of 3d performance in these what we showed you here but compared to amd and intel apple gets the same performance as these massive GPUs on a laptop. Now that is impressive, especially compared to the A770, which is about 30 to 40% slower in Blender. That's absolutely insane performance there. Now, all of these GPUs use different nodes from TSMC. All of the G chips, the GPU chips that actually does the calculating, all of them actually use TSMC to provide those chips to them. And then they make the actual chip out of, you know, those uh, wafers. So Intel, interestingly, even though they are a chip producer themselves, for their GPUs, they're buying the chips in from TSMC and they're using the six nanometer TSMC process node for these GPUs, which is the cheapest out of this, out of this bunch. And there's a reason why they're doing it. It's because this is their first generation desktop GPUs. They are doing a lot of testing and a lot of, you know, optimization in drivers and a lot of software. That means that they don't want to pay for expensive nodes to get an expensive GPU out there. They want to get a cheaper node so their graphics cards are more affordable so they can get to the lower end of the budget market and get a lot of people buying the GPUs so they can get a lot of testing data to actually improve the performance of the GPUs. And for the next generation, they're probably going to up or get a better node to actually be more compatible in power consumption and performance with the competition. Now, this AMD 7900 XT actually uses a chiplet design, which means that they have different kind of little chips that they can glue together depending what they need. The graphics processor in there that actually gives you graphics performance is using five nanometer TSMC node, but the other bits in there use six nanometer node from TSMC. So the bits that actually don't need the faster and more expensive and less power consuming um, node, they just put up that on the cheaper six nanometer one but the power that actually gives you performance on the five nanometer one so there's a combination of you know price to performance to get the best bang for buck here for amd this nvidia rtx 4070 is using five nanometer tsmc node and this is especially made for um, nvidia as well from tsmc but there that's what it is five five and six and then six from intel but this ample chip the m3 max is actually using three nanometer TSMC node. And that is one of the most advanced technologies out there right now. And I don't think there's anything else that's on a less or smaller nanometer process out there right now. So this is the cutting edge, edge technology wafers that they're buying from TSMC. They're paying a big buck for that. And these laptops cost a lot as well. And that's part of the reason. What does that mean in terms of power consumption and performance? Well, let's take a look. Just a quick intervention over here. If you're looking for the best storage for your Mac device, whether it's laptops, Mac Studio, Mac Mini, then I highly recommend you go check out my storage guide for the Mac devices. I'll leave it linked in the description below, but there I'll explain how you can get something like this and an SSD like this Samsung 990 Pro, for example, or some of the more affordable ones. So if you're looking to save money, have faster, more flexible and more warranty on your storage, then check it out in the video description below. The video is right down there. The max power draw that we can get from this M3 Max when utilized is about 70 watt package power draw, as you can see when we're utilizing CPU and GPU at the same time. Now, if we're doing a GPU only test, something like a Blender Render, Redshift or something like that, we're seeing roughly about 35 watts pulled from the GPU only. Compared to this Intel Arc, which we see over here, is pulling 180 watts when fully utilized. That's more than five times the GPU power what you get in there. And more than two and a half time the whole package draw just from this GPU. The 4070 is using 200 watts of power to get the performance there. And this 7900 XD is 
pulling maximum of 330 watts of power from the whole GPU. That's almost 10 times as much as this GPU on the M3 Max. So now calculating the performance per watt on in Blender, if we're doing the Blender render and looking at how much the GPUs are pulling, then we can see that the M3 Max is getting 22.6 points per watt. Moving on to the Arc A770, which gets 5.6 points per watt, which is 75.2% slower, or in other words, about four times less points per watt as we get from this Apple M3 Max. The 7900 XT, is even worse, 4.7 points per watt, which is almost five times less points per watt. And then the RTX 4070 is actually a little bit better, 15.5 points per watt, but that is still about 31% less points than the M3 Max. Now, in here we're looking only the creative application 3D rendering performance, that is not all. And we get that all of these GPUs have their media encoders and hardware acceleration playback of some of these codecs. And that is not really easy to compare on its own separately because then other bits are in the mix as well. Whenever we're encoding video, we're using some of the CPU, some of the RAM and some of the other bits. So it's hard to compare it and, you know, extract that only performance and i'm not a gamer in this channel so gaming i don't really care and uh, you know obviously if you do gaming then these gpus are most likely much better than the m3 max but the whole point of this is that apple is onto something very very interesting and this comes from the guy who runs the pc channel for creators we're doing lots of pc things there but this M3 Max and whatever GPU Apple is doing inside there can't be underestimated just because they're able to pull the same type of performance on a laptop than what we get on the desktop GPUs. To get 3D rendering performance in Blender and Redshift as we have this massive 330 watt GPU which is the latest from AMD in a laptop that's absolutely unheard of and absolutely insane. Now, if you do want to pick this up or check out these GPUs, I'll leave them in the description below. But you might be saying, look, I don't care about the laptop and I don't really want to have a laptop. I'm just working at home and I don't need the portability. Then yes, you can get something built for a lot less than what this laptop costs with a lot of benefits actually of upgradability and serviceability but you have to do a little bit of diy but if you want to get the best bank for buck create a pc for you as a creator then i've got some build guides in the description below they're completely free pick the budget that's closest to yours and i'll explain everything down there just follow my videos and you can build the pc for yourself and well i've got to say i'm impressed with this apple performance and uh, can't wait to see what comes next.